Enter the clandestine world of skill refinement where a singular tool reigns supreme, the enigmatic static line. There are two variations of this system, both serving as invaluable benchmarks. Developing skills while staying level with the control line can produce remarkable results as it encourages subconscious multitasking and fosters beneficial habits in breathing and overall buoyancy control, all while pushing your boundaries. Incorporating this method will significantly enhance the productivity of your underwater sessions, whether focusing on static or dynamic skills. Let's begin by establishing the commonly recognized version, the horizontal control line. The concept involves having a lengthy line extended between two fixed points, whether it's anchored to a solid object or, as demonstrated in this video, utilizing the vertical line of a partially deployed DSMB. Ensuring your buoy is properly fastened to a non-sensitive surface is crucial, so be sure to watch the video attentively. After looping the line around the object in any direction initially, Remember to cross it over the top and reverse the loop in the opposite direction to firmly secure the line. Once done, you use your double ender to lock the spool in place. By employing this method, you can rest assured that your DSMB will stay secure and adequately hold the control line in position. The advantage of using a DSMB instead of tying your horizontal line to a fixed object is that you will have the flexibility to position your line at the desired depth. While various items can serve as tie-off points, we suggest acquiring a set of line markers typically utilized in cave diving as they offer the most flexibility and can be easily purchased online. It's noteworthy that SMBs don't require surfacing, nor do you need significant depth. The diver in the video showcases this at just 3 meters, so it's a perfectly suitable setup even in pools. If you encounter a scenario lacking a suitable anchor point for your DSMB, Repurposing a traditional weight belt can effectively provide the necessary support. As a general guideline, affixing approximately 4 kg of lead onto the weight belt will adequately secure a sufficiently inflated buoy. The manner of tying off the SMB becomes less critical when using a belt because it creates a closed loop, essentially preventing the line from slipping off, unlike on natural structures. Make sure to securely lock the spool with the bolt snap in both types of tie-offs as shown in the video. The structure needs to be strong enough to endure some force, particularly if your positioning is not accurate, initially causing you to drift into the line during practice. Once you have both DSMBs set up and stable and your markers placed at the same depth on the vertical line, proceed to pull out the control line. To do this, you will need an additional spool that's approximately 33 meters in length, essentially the same type of finger spool you are using for your DSMBs. Ensure you prepare your spool ahead of the dive by creating a sufficiently large loop at the line's open end, allowing the spool to be passed through comfortably. Then, affix it to the marker following the steps demonstrated in the video. Ensure that when securing the opposite end of the spool, the line is fully taut between the DSMBs. Any considerable slack could render the setup unreliable in the event of significant water movement. Otherwise, this system should endure under conditions suitable for skill practice. The alternative version of the control line method offers a simpler and faster assembly, requiring just a single vertical line. It proves highly efficient for practicing two specific aspects that we'll delve into shortly. To set up this version, you only require one DSMB. Once deployed, you can tie it to any non-sensitive surface following the instructions provided earlier. Take note of how to secure the line once more shown from a different perspective this time. Once you've secured the buoy, the idea is to place a marker at a specific depth to serve as a visual reference. You can use anything available to you that can be affixed to the line. In our case, we use the cave line marker. The exercise involves staying level with the marker for a minute, maintaining your position relative to it. This can become quite challenging in the presence of any water movement, which is the beauty of this simple exercise. It will enhance your situational awareness. As you track time, challenge your breathing to maintain your depth and, most importantly, compel you to employ various finning techniques to remain in position relative to the marker. Essentially, it encompasses all you need to become a proficient diver. Once you've spent a minute maintaining level with the marker, change your position to be a meter shallower and place another item on the line. 
we improvise this to demonstrate that anything can be utilized. In this instance, the diver simply uses his fin carrier strap, which is just a bungee with a single-ended bolt snap. Repeat the previous position hold exercise, and once your minute is up, return to the bottom and repeat the process. If you're keen on delving deeper into enhancing your buoyancy skills, we offer a comprehensive guide to depth adjustment as well as breathing exercises in our buoyancy control video. Access it by clicking the card in the upper right corner or find the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and hope you learned something. Consider subscribing to Flow State Divers to become part of the community of conscious divers and to get notified on our upcoming content.